I don't get what everybody's all worked up about. I like NFTs. Nice fat tushies. An interesting thing happened last week. Epic Games and Warner Brothers released The Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine 5 Experience for free on PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. Now, truly, frankly, honestly, this is the kind of thing where I probably would have forgotten about it a week later, but I think just like doing a regular show like this, you think back to something like that and you're like, wait, that was a thing. This was a 25 gigabyte advertisement, but this is next gen right here in our hands. We're playing it today. And, it, and next gen itself is becoming such an increasingly nebulous concept that it's so nice to have this undebatably next gen thing that we can point at and begin to define exactly in absolute terms what next geniness is. And so today we're introducing a brand new segment. Next gen is, next gen is not. Next gen is procedurally generated cities. So one of the most impressive things about this demo is that it demonstrates this huge giant city that always feels, it feels like an actual city without it feeling copy pasty, right? Because you can tell, you can tell when you're playing a game and you're beginning to see reused assets. Here, sure, some buildings are weird. Some buildings are boring, but it creates a convincing enough city that it's never distracting how fake it is. I mean, look, they even have a Scott's Light Shades. Next gen is not NPCs with bad posture. So Epic calls these NPCs metahumans, as if this is the best looking regular basic human we've ever seen in a video game before. I don't know about this. I don't get this. They exhibit a, a, a variety of heights and races, but for some reason, nobody really slouches, right? We don't, just give me an old woman who slouches. Next gen is the sexiest possible versions of actors. The experience takes a moment to tell us this. In an industry where actors have tried to remain perpetually young, we wondered about digital faces that could become immortal. Okay, so this whole demo, obviously it seems more targeted towards game developers than players. But this one particular part, honestly, to me, seems targeted towards actors. Like, who else cares? Hey, baby, come act in video. You can be flawless in a video game. Come be in a video game. Come on, you'll be flawless. You'll be hotter than ever. Meanwhile, most of the Game of the Year nominees are all starring absolute cartoon characters. Look, the, the Psychonauts kids are ugly as fuck. I'd love to see Keanu Reeves as some sort of wet bug, but that's not what's in store for us, I guess. The future is horny. Next gen is not high frame rates. Past year of next gen, of our new consoles, we've been basically spoiled with high frame rates because most of the games that we've played are cross-generational, right? We're just playing the games we've been playing at higher resolution, higher frame rates. And here we see if we want our big budget graphical showpieces, we're going back to barely pushing 30 FPS. Next gen is QTEs you can't fail. Now more than ever, it's important for the player to feel accomplished, even if they aren't doing anything impressive. I mean, look, I'm not pressing a button right there. Add some XP and loot to this and I'd play this for days. And finally, next gen is not inherently interesting. The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal 5 experience, is a great pitch to game developers who may be looking to streamline their workflow. But none of these advertised features truly spark my own imagination as to what could be the possibilities. For instance, the dynamic crashing is sweet. It's fun. But also, I used to spend hours crashing cars on a Toka demo disc on PS1. Like, I've been crashing cars. What's new? And to be clear, when I say it's not inherently interesting, I'm not saying that next gen sucks, right? I'm not saying it's in danger. It's not in peril. The consoles are selling very well, obviously. And also 2022, looks to be like an all-timer year in terms of video game quality, in terms of things that I'm actually genuinely excited about. Uh, but I'm just reminded of this a, a tech demo that Nintendo had before the GameCube came out, in which they showed off 128 Marios wandering around. And it was just like, that was it. It was like, look, 128 Marios. And even as a child, I'm like, oh, okay. And then of course, when that idea evolved into Pikmin, a practical application of this idea, then I was like, oh, okay, next gen. 
this is a thing I couldn't do before. This is, this is a new type of game that I could not play before on my old consoles. You did this. Great idea, Mr. Miyamoto. And so to Unreal 5 game developers, all I'm saying is good luck turning this into Pikmin. That's it for Delayed Input this week. I'll be back next week. And yes, we will be doing it. Delayed Input's oldest tradition. Kyle's Christmas wish list will be happening. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. So I'm at this point, I'm pretty much known as probably the biggest Spider-Man fan on YouTube. And for that reason, you're probably looking forward to my No Way Home review. And I, yeah, we're doing it. I just wanted to do it after the credits so that anybody who maybe hasn't seen it yet has time to exit the video. Like, thank you for watching up to this point, but it's probably best, it's probably time for you to go because we're about to start our deep dive. Okay. 10 out of 10.